Well, if it wasn't for bad luck right now, I don't think I'd have any. Uh, the gent who was digging the line, or the uh, trench, hit the water line. Told him where it was, where it was marked. I guess uh, he decided to keep going with the machine instead of hand digging. And uh, we have a flood out here. So yeah, it's uh, flooding the street, unfortunately. I have called the city water department. They're going to come shut it off. So I have a moat now. All right, guys. Well, I'm here chiseling out cement in that uh, area where we got the new memes put in. Still waiting on a plumber to come out here and quote me on this uh, destruction out front that uh, my buddy there with the uh, backhoe I hired decided to uh, expose my water line and, you know, breach it. But uh, part of it, I think, might have been the way the city, when they changed the uh, shutoff point, there was an old shutoff point, which was still sticking up out of the ground. I thought it was an old uh, signpost. They never removed it. They just put it on a little uh, junction box or tee box or whatever they called it and kept it going, which doesn't seem legit to me, but regardless, um, that's the issue. And there's a state law that requires jurisdictions to replace all lead lines, and we have a lead line, so I'm talking to the governor. Not the governor, I'm talking to the mayor. And uh, we're going to see what we can do with that, since it needs to be replaced anyways. Um, hopefully they can uh, replace it, since the law requires them to replace lead lines. So, we'll see. Maybe I'll get lucky, but uh, I don't. I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm probably going to be out, whatever it costs to fix that dang thing, so... I'm sitting here, uh, leaning up against my subfloor, kind of, a, uh, not gonna lie, a little disheartened. Um, uh, feel like every time I start making some forward momentum, something jumps up and says, nope, stop, eh, eh, er. and, um, yeah, so, that's what I'm working on over there, chiseling up all that cement, you can see. I'm at, unfortunately, I have to use the, uh, well, I don't have to, but I'm using the, uh, Hammer drill chisel thing in the jiggy. That's not what you're seeing there. That is a uh, that's a vacuum cleaner shop vac. But uh, looks like I'm laying down, but I'm not. I'm actually leaning up against the wall. But uh, the uh, the grinder I bought, not the grinder, but the blade I bought for that grinder. Uh, I can't get the grinder blade off of my buddies that I borrowed, and I really don't want to go buy a new grinder just to do that one job. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna chisel it up the rest of the way, and uh, I don't know. See what happens with this front. Thought we were gonna have that cement poured this week, and we'd be pushing this thing out and be busting it and getting things done. But uh, looks like things are gonna be going a little slower now, unfortunately. And my butt's falling asleep from sitting on this floor. It's not very fun. But anyway, back to work for me. All right. So the other guy, he got the can. So uh, me and Mike rented the machine, and we're doing it ourselves. At least we already know where the water line is, or that schmuck hit it. Can I say schmuck on here? I can. But, uh, so yeah, we're just basically digging this down to our 42 inches. And I'm just basically taking wheelbarrow loads of this around the building, and we're going to push it a big pile afterwards. But as you can see, Miss Dig, Miss Utility, marked it, and uh, our good friend that came out here decided he didn't want to heed that uh, warning. What do you think, Mike? Bad idea for him, right? All right, hold on. I'll show you. There's my piles. So I'm basically pulling this right now. Well, I'm talking to you guys. It's heavy. It's sand. It's all wet sand. So, all right, I gotta go dump this and get back over there. All right, guys. So we got that dug out as much as we can. Being sand, it starts collapsing in on itself. So we're gonna have to build some forms of plywood and uh, shore it up, and then backfill it and get our 42 by 16. But as you can see, we got a giant pile of sand here. That was all taken out by wheelbarrow by me. She ain't got it. So we're gonna have a bunch of, this is just sand. Literally it's wet right now, but once it dries out, it's just like the sand you'd get for your playground. Like, here, I'll show you. We got some that I spread out over here the other day when uh, the guy hit our line. This is where he dumped it, but you can see it's just sand. All right, so there's our giant sand mounds. We're actually gonna probably actually need to be bringing a bunch of this back to, to backfill. I'll show you. Mike's down here in a grave. Do you feel like one of those guys that has to dig their own grave, Mike? Yeah. He does. So, as you can see, it just keeps collapsing. So we need to build walls with this and we'll backfill it. And we're going to need more of that sand because, obviously, we don't want to have to waste money on cement to okay. fill that in. Yeah, you want to screw? Okay, I'm going to... I got to get back to work here. But I figured I would share what we're doing with you guys. All right, guys, we've been here all day, all night. It's 9.30. I think I got here at 9.30 this morning, but we finally got the holes dug. Um, I'll show you what we got here. Hold on a second. 
All right, so here's the remainder of our giant pile of sand. We're actually gonna need a lot of that to backfill the, uh, the trenches here. Mike is finishing up with the uh, caution tape. He's got his orange shirt. I should make fun of him today for the orange shirt because being a traffic cone along the side of this road is good. But as you can see, we had to put up our caution fence and all that stuff. But we have the framing in. Um, so basically that's where it gets filled with cement. We just covered that up because we had some extra plywood, but then we have this thing cautioned off and everything. If you were walking down the road as a drunk man, would you stumble in? No. Okay, well, if Mike wouldn't stumble in, then I think we're good to go. I think we did our due diligence here. So now all we're waiting on is the plumber to come out and fix this, and I gotta figure out um, what we're gonna do or what we need to do to hook this up, so. Anyway, I am gonna go get some dinner and uh, call it a night. I'm beat. Catch you guys later. I know, right? All right, guys, we're back at the shop. We're working. As you saw, me and Mike were working at what, 10 o'clock last night? Yeah. Something like that. Mike's tired. I'm tired. But today we have help. So it's two and a half men. It's Carl's here. <laughs> Just kidding, Carl. We love you. All right, so what we're doing today is we got that all put in. For the most part, what we could do is let the plumber comes out. And unfortunately, if you want it done, you got to do it yourself. So, you know, me and Mike were out there digging all day and getting that stuff done. But we're putting it in. We're doing a subfloor in here. We're running this all the rest of the way out. And then we're going to put up temporary walls. Carl? Carl, you have anything to say? Carl said he wasn't on YouTube enough, so. <laughs> That's good. No, no, no. Now we're going to get your face. <laughs> <laughs> Carl's like, I'm going to punch you in the nose. Nah, we're, like I said, you got, if you got something you need to get done, you got to do it yourself or get some people you trust. So Carl and Mike, they're good to go. They barely mess up anything. Just kidding. They never mess up anything. <laughs> Well, there was that issue with the step. We did mess up these steps. We had to tear them down and put them back up. But other than that, we're good. So we're gonna get this up. We're gonna do the temp walls, tear out this today, and uh, the, run the rest of the subfloor out. And then Monday, I'm hoping I get the plumber out here to can fix that line out there, and then uh, we'll be good to go. Well, I showed you that when it was dark. Let me uh, do my precarious, precarious step down here. Ay, ay, ay. So as you can see, we got these forms here, and um, we got to continue them, but I can't go past that with my forms because that's where the pipes are, and the plumber's going to need to fix that. So that tall thing right there that's leaning up against the wall, that's the old stem, like the old shutoff valve, and the city, for whatever reason, decided to leave that there, and it was sticking about three inches above this sidewalk, and then they put their new, their new line in there. So I don't know why they kept that one in there and it was teed off at the bottom. So if you're a plumber or a city employee and it can explain why they wouldn't have just uh, it gotten rid of that one all together. I mean, at least kept the water thing on the top so I'd know it was a water line, but, but yeah, that needs to get done. And then once those forms are all put in, we'll get the cement poured and uh, we should be good to go. Those, those two by fours in there just to hold it apart. And then we got to put rebar in there and fill it with cement, so. All right guys, getting back to work in here. Carl and Mike need uh, some hands, some hands. Uh, some hands or something. I'm trying to climb out of this pit. There's no stairs in this building to get in. So I, if you're getting in, you're jumping. Carl had a hard time. Yeah. Don't lie, Carl. I'm staying up. All right, hey, Carl. Thanks for picking me up and helping me in. I, hey, hey, I'm here to lend a helping hand. <laughs> that, that was a beautiful rendition of that song, Michael. All right, we're working. Well, hello, everybody. John here with Sarge Red. Thanks for joining me today. As you can see, I'm wearing a G.I. Joe shirt. What's that mean? That means this was the only clean shirt I had today. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I did happen to throw this on, and I did have a gentleman happen to reach out to me today that he has a collection of G.I. Joe's, so we will go check those out. This is totally coincidental, but I'm here at the shop right now waiting on a plumber. Um, he has to come out and take a look at this uh, this pipe out front, give me a quote on that, and hopefully we can get that all scheduled and set up, because that is what we're waiting on now. Um, as you guys saw yesterday, turn this thing around. We got a lot more of the subfloor run out. Um, we went to lunch and then everyone like just, we were all like, oh, food coma. Great Italian place right next door. We went there and man, we ate too much. And then we just came back here and shot the, shot the breeze for a little bit. And we're like, yeah, we're gonna come back and finish this tomorrow. So uh, we gotta finish running out some subfloor here. Really all we're missing is two pieces of subfloor over here that we have to run out. And then we gotta do these temp walls. But we need to get the um, posts out before we, re before we fill that in, those, those holes there. Like I said, um, this has got to come out, and then the new post will run, or the new beam will run all the way over to there. So, what I'm waiting on, plumber, tell me if this hole, or uh, give me a quote of this pipe that our, my good buddy, 
my good buddy, I'm not going to call him out yet because he said he's going to pay for it. We're going to make sure he does what he's supposed to do before we say what his company name was. Hopefully he does the right thing. He should have insurance. He said he had insurance, but I got to get a quote first. So, waiting on that. Um, and then, I mean, this is really, this is holding up a lot, guys. Unfortunately, um, we'd probably be a lot farther along right now if it wasn't for him hitting that line. Um, because now we have to get the rest of the hole dug. Well, first we have to get the pipe fixed, right? And then we have to have the inspector scheduled, have the inspector come out, and you know how it works with government time. Oh, we'll be out there in uh, fiscal year 2027, we'll be out to make sure your pipe's fixed. Um, then they have to come out, or oh, after that's inspected, right? Then I have to finish digging that side out, get it down to 42 inches, frame it up with the plywood, because the sand kind of collapses in and out on itself. Not really out on itself, it just collapses in on itself. Um, then they have to come out and they have to tell me my holes are the right depth, because I don't know how to use a tape measure. Clearly, 42 inches, I can't tell. Now, the dude digging the trench couldn't tell because he went down too deep and hit a line. But that's neither here nor there. He's not here. He should be here fixing this. But the thing that kind of irks me the most is, like, he's like, oh, I'm going to stop working now. I don't want don't to dig the rest of these trenches. I was like, all right, buddy. Well, thanks. I didn't pay him, obviously. He's going to be, hopefully, getting that squared away. Um, but, yeah, get that out. The inspectors have to come out and be like, hey, you, you, your holes, sir, your holes are deep enough. You may proceed with your project. And then I'll get the cement to pour out. Okay, and then they have to come back out again and inspect the cement, I think. Um, and then we can start building the framing out front, bust out this uh, this half wall, not half wall, but this, this cinder block wall, the glass. We'll have a temporary plywood wall up out there while we're waiting on the uh, windows, the uh, new storefront to come in. That's the next step after we get all that done. We'll finish framing this side of the building, as you can see behind me and in front of me. It's all cinder block. We need to get it framed out with two by fours. Um, which are getting really expensive in price. I am so happy. I am so happy I bought all this lumber before the prices started skyrocketing. Don't, don't get me wrong, they were high when I bought them, but I think I have enough lumber left. I think, I hope, or close enough to get the rest of this framed out without having to like pawn one of my children. So what we're gonna do, get all this stuff squared away, get these walls done and uh, go from there. But until then, until I get my crew back here, I am going to go check out this collection of G.I. Joes, and I will uh, bring you guys along for the ride and show you what we got. We actually found a small collection of G.I. Joes yesterday, um, which I will show you a video on that as well. It wasn't a ton of stuff, but still, it was like, what was it, 45, I think it was like 65 figures and, and stuff like that. So, not a lot, but it's a gentleman I deal with a lot who kind of just buys everything, and when he buys toys, he contacts me. So, anyways, I am going to get, well, I'm not going to do any work right now. It's raining outside, and uh I'm waiting for Mike and his crew to come back out here, but I'm going to be driving out to check out this collection, so... I'm done babbling! I'm doing a little bubbling today. I'm even using voices, and I'm talking very fast. I don't know why. I can't, I can't help myself, so... Anyways, guys, without further ado, I'm going to go hit the road, check out this collection, and I will go from there. And instead of a transition between scenes like I normally do, I'm just going to do the spin, and then we'll be there. Alright, guys, we're here to check out this G.I. Joe collection. A um, lot of cool stuff here. I'm going to turn the camera on and show you what we have here. So now we have how many maulers are there? 13, right? Yep. So we have 13 maulers. They're all complete with the exception of those four. So they all work, you said. They all have the... Uh, right. So those are really cool. We have a complete killer whale with all the paperwork. Um, obviously, we have three cutters. We have a couple of the new guys here. We have this little pewter fella. And that, what's that from? You said that was just like a... Just a collector's series. Collector, collector's piece. We got the trouble bubble. We got a serpentor. The weasel, right? there. No, the ferret, right? Yep. And then we have uh, Snow Vipers, Crimson, I mean, you have everything. Not everything. We have a bunch of bats. So we're army building. Is that why you have so many of those? Or just what's left of the armies. So gentleman here said the entire house was full at one point, And unfortunately, he didn't find me first and <laughs> sold it to some other knucklehead, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> this is what's left, which is still cool. I mean, we got guys with the full card backs. You know, you got Rikondo. You got Wetsuit. You got Roadblock. You got a bunch of uh, heavy metals to go with these. So, pretty cool. And then down here is a bunch of ugh, killer whale pieces, parts. So, you said there's probably enough down here to at least make no another complete one. And yeah, then, if not two. Yeah, and I know I have a bunch of ones that are missing pieces. So, hopefully this will make me uh, be able to complete some of the ones that I have there. You got the little, uh, what's that little fella called? I forget the name of the... The Manta. Manta, that's it. And then over here we have a couple more uh, killer whale shells. Um, a bunch of snake armors. There we got, oh yeah, where's that box of snake armors at? You said there's what, five complete ones in there? Like five complete ones in there, plus all these stands. Okay. You see all these stands in there, and about a hundred extra 
attachments to it. All right, sweet. All the little hands you could use. Yeah, enough to complete everything. Mm -hmm. And you said these ones are complete down here, these two? Yep, um, complete and unbroken. And then these ones here are just basically for parts? Yeah, they just need a little work, a little TLC, but they're not broke. Okay. So that's what we have, guys. Um, pretty cool stuff. And I got another little G.I. Joe collection the other day, and I'll, I'll go through that one here later as well and just kind of add it to the same video. But all right, we're going to wheel and deal, try to make a deal on all this stuff, and uh, go from there. All right, guys, as promised, uh, I told you I did pick up another smaller G.I. Joe collection uh, the day before I picked this one up. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's go through it. So this one comes with... Mmm... Danish butter cookies. Actually, no, that's just how all the accessories are stored. Ooh, look at you can see me. Cool. Um, so probably not gonna go through all these. I'm not gonna go through all these accessories on here. No one wants to see that. But uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot of mixing and matching here. Or, well, not mixing, hopefully, a lot of matching to match all this stuff up with the appropriate characters and uh, figures. So we got those two things of accessories there. And this was, there has to be more vehicles with this uh, collection. And like I said, this is from a, a person who buys uh, all kinds of random stuff. He just knows I buy toys. Oh wait, that one's full of body parts. So um, am I missing one of these? I thought there was one that had the two dogs in it. Oh no, there they are. Okay, yeah, you got a uh, junkyard's dog and you got a uh, uh, snake eyes wolf there. So basically we have our our Danish butter cookie tin full of body parts. Now, these are all the ones that were busted up. Like, ponytails missing on him. Um, this bat. Man, he had some kind of malfunction. I guess the kid who had him burnt him. It looks like he's got, like, a burn mark. But, these hands will come in handy. All right? Because this is always missing. So, I got an extra hand. And, unfortunately, the, the decal on him is kind of burnt. But, still got a nice little... Uh, Army figure, you can use him for army building. Like he got uh, blasted in the uh, old crotch there by uh, G.I. Joe. Now, the reason I said I think there's vehicles that go with this collection is there are a lot of accessories um, and missiles and stuff that go to vehicles, obviously. Um, where are they at? Okay, my, no, I'm not missing a ton. I'm just going crazy today, guys. So there are two little vehicles with this. Um, nothing major. We yeah. have this one, and, and then we got the fang. So, let's go through some of the figures here. Get those out. There's a couple totes. So, I mean, I think in here, I want to say I, ca I counted all the body parts um, when I went through it. I know that sounds really, really bad, but... Then you have uh, some more pieces here. But the gent who I get this stuff from, basically, like I said, he buys vintage t-shirts. But he ends up finding other stuff in his uh, quest for vintage stuff. And uh, he knows I collect toys, or buy toys, and uh, gets them to me. So we just have a couple little uh, teeny accessories here. Here's another thing of accessories. And, uh, well, Serpentor is pretty dead in there, so... We have a snake. If Croc Master's a gator there. Or crocodile, I guess. Um, so, I'm, yeah, let's see a couple of the guys we have in here. We have Shipwreck, um, Heavy Metal, Barbecue. So I went through here, and there were like four broken torsos. The rest of them are actually uh, complete in there. I don't, I don't know if they're... Um, like Storm Shadow there. He's uh, seen some better days. But there were like four broken crotches, so I didn't go and count all the legs to make sure there were the legs for the crotches out of this bin. This was just kind of the stuff that was broken and in need of repair. Some of that stuff is beyond repair. Obviously that bat, I mean, it's kind of dead. But um, we have, I want to say there were 45 figures that were not broken. Um, and then there were uh, 45 in there, if I remember correctly. So, And we'll just do this. Whoa, no one wants to see that. All right. Oh, well, there's one that's a... There's a crotch. He might have fallen apart inside of there. And I'm just going to kind of go through these. Not super fast, but uh, not super duper slow. 
A lifeline. This guy's kind of goofy. What's his name? Raptor. He does still have his wings. There's another barbecue. Wasn't there one in the uh, bin of dead bodies there? There's low light. He's got like a pose going like Vogue. And his legs were the ones that fell off. And then, uh, see, there's one of the broken uh, crotches. That was Serpentor. And obviously, the rest of Serpentor was bad, too. So, we have twins. I don't know why this thing is just not wanting to focus, guys. So, I apologize for the uh, weird focusing in type thing it's doing. But I'm hoping most of these guys have their, their weapons, because there's those two bins of accessories, so I will be going through, like I said, and kind of uh, matching all these guys up and fixing them where they need to be fixed. Like him, his, his band is obviously about ready to go if it's not already broken in there. We have a uh, crotch master. Did I just say crotch master? Croc master. <laughs> um, I saw two broken crotches in there. That's where that came from. Wild Weasel, right? Roadblock. Nice little green stripes. I should do that. I think I can pull that off. Whoa. There we go. Whoa. All right. Got a phone call, so that kind of cut out. Um, Got to love recording with your phone. It's very, very convenient. Um, but sometimes you get a phone call or you get a text. I just actually uh, got a call from the plumber, and they're going to come out and fix that uh, that line tomorrow at 8 a.m. So that will hopefully be done. That should be a one-day job. I, I can't imagine it's going to be much longer than that just to, to put that in there. But, um, yeah, that's one less headache to have uh, going on right now. Because I tell you what, like I said, guys, that was a gut punch. And uh, I'm going to have to... Now that I got a quote and a guy coming out, I'm going to have to call up the fellow that did the digging and uh, make sure that he does what he said he was going to do, which was going to be covering that, because I'm not paying for something that someone else did when I was paying him to do the job. Right? Rakondo says yes. I don't know why I think that's his voice, but maybe it's a stash. Man, he's got like a weird tan line going on there or something. So, but that's good. Um, so... Hopefully that's squared away, then we can get the rest of that form built and get the cement poured and uh, get this place on the road. So you guys can come in and buy some wonderful G.I. Joes like Dr. Mindbender, who kind of looks like a, uh, well, hmm. let your imagination do the walking. I, got, I can't remember his name, all the dreadnoughts, I always get them confused. An old beachhead. So like I said, I'm hoping all the accessories are in there. There was a bunch. I mean, you know, normally accessories will get lost. So there's probably a couple missing, I would imagine. But we'll find out. Can you guys guess what I'll be doing for the rest of the evening? If you guessed putting G.I. Joes together with their weapons, you guessed correctly. If you guessed uh, putting G.I. Joe body parts back together with their uh, torsos and hips, you guessed correctly as well. But, um... Like I said, not a huge collection here. A bunch of figures, though. Not a lot of vehicles. So I'm hoping uh, that he gets back in touch with me. I, I asked him to talk to the gentleman he bought them from. He would not disclose his source, unfortunately. But I kind of think the box that it's in has the person's name on it. But I wouldn't do that to him. But um, And see if he can uh, find all the rest of the vehicles. Because there's got to be some vehicles along with this. Well, you'd hope. So the other collection that I got, um, right after this one, with all those maulers and everything, was pretty cool. I mean, it was a pretty neat collection. A lot of duplicates, which is cool. I, I wish he would have gotten a hold of me. There's Dusty. Um, wish he would have gotten a hold of me before he sold off all the rest of that stuff he had. Because you know me, I love buying entire houses full of toys. Always fun. You got Leatherneck there. Who's your favorite Marine? Leatherneck or Gung Ho? Gung Ho! Exactly. The only right answer. All right, hardball here. I always thought he was kind of lame. Baseball player. Sergeant Slaughter's pretty bad. Bad isn't good. He's cool. And one of the 
wipers there. I forget which one he is. Hey guys! Like my mustache? It kind of looks like my dad when he was younger and had uh, had some color to his hair. I guess I can't talk too much smack. My hair has two colors, gray and blackish brown. Or brown. I don't know. I'm just babbling, guys. Um, two left in here. Got Ant-Man. I know it's not really Ant-Man. And Rocky Balboa's brother, Tim. So, anyways, guys, like I said, this is the other collection of G.I. Joe's. I'm going to start getting this stuff all matched up with their uh, accessories and then fixing people such as Low Light here. Not Low Life, Low Light. Um, I mean, as you guys know, these these rubber bands, they, they just rot out, dry rot over time, and then uh, break out. But easy enough fix. So I'm going to get to that, guys. And uh, hopefully you enjoy this video. Wow, that is fuzzy. Whoop, there, I will give you a view of wonder. All right, so if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, share it with your friends, and do all that fun stuff, or else, or else what, you may ask? Dr. Mindbender will come for you. <laughs> uh, uh, with my stash and me monocle. Like, what is he wearing? It's not very intimidating, I guess. I don't know. All right. All right, guys, that's enough of me babbling, and you looking at G.I. Joe's. Catch you later.